Good morning. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming this morning and for, this, uh, for our press conference to uh, introduce the 20th full-time manager in Rangers history. And with that, I will turn it over to our Executive Vice President and General Manager, Chris Young. Good morning. Thank you, John. I uh, want to thank everybody for being here on a very special day for the Texas Rangers franchise. Uh, I think as we look around, we can all see uh, so many members of our organization here to show their support and excitement uh, for our new manager, Bruce Bochy, um, including players, uh, coaches, staff, alumni, and front office members from both the business and the baseball ops side. Thank you all for being here and for the contributions to this process that you've each have made, whether directly or indirectly. Uh, I'd also like to thank our ownership, Ray Davis and Neil Liebman. Um, Ray, you've played an integral role in this process and very grateful to support you've given us. Uh, as I start here, I want to first uh, recognize Kim Bochy, Bochy's wife. Um, Kim, uh, when we saw you in Nashville, uh, I said to you that you're equally important in this process to us. And we know the sacrifices that you and your family make, and we're extremely grateful to have you and Bruce both as members of the Texas Rangers family. Two months ago, we decided that a new voice was needed in our dugout. At that point, we began an, ex an extensive and thorough process within the front office to define the criteria we felt was most important in selecting our next manager. That required a lot of reflection of where we are as an organization, what we have done well, where we need to improve, and how we intend to achieve our goals of building a championship caliber team that our fans deserve. Ultimately, the overarching objective was to find a manager who creates a positive environment that gets the best out of everyone, including players, coaches, staff, and the front office. Now, there are a lot of attributes that go into this, from communication and collaboration, setting high standards, accountability, empowerment, humility, amongst, amongst many more. Additionally, organizational alignment with our core values and vision is equally important. And of course, the ability to prepare, strategize, and effectively manage games is a critical aspect of the job. After weeks of defining the criteria and internally vetting numerous potential candidates, we landed on an initial short list of names. I am extremely grateful to say we were able to hire our top choice, a man whose leadership and success in this game speaks for itself. As you know, I had the opportunity to play for Boach one season, and in that year I was able to see firsthand how impactful his leadership style was. I am extremely confident that Boach is the right person to lead our organization on the field, and I'm looking forward to partnering with him as we, as we embark on what I believe is going to be a great era of Rangers baseball. With that, I could not be more excited to introduce the next manager of the Texas Rangers, Bruce Bochy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, CY. Thank you very much for those comments. And uh, I'm going to thank all of you for coming out here today. Uh, you know, first of all, I mean, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be putting this jersey on. And so a big thank you uh, to Ray Davis and Chris Young for, for making this possible. You know, when, when you uh, step back from the game for a little bit, uh, that gratitude meter shoots way up uh, when something special like this happens. So again, I can't tell you guys how grateful I am to be here. 
Uh, I, I know some have asked why. Well, the simple answer is I miss this game. There's so many things about the game I miss. Uh, in the dugout, uh, you know, the competition, being on the team. And, uh, um, but beside that, I said, if I'm going to jump back in the fire, it had to be the right fit. And after our many conversations that uh, CY and I had, uh, that was pretty evident. I mean, we talked uh, many hours about the team and, and uh, the culture that he wanted to uh, create. And uh, I, I was in. I could see, I could see and feel the, uh, the passion, commitment that he has to been, uh, building a, a winning culture here and uh, bringing winning baseball back to the Ranger fans. So I was all in on that. And then I had a chance to chat with, uh, with uh, Mr. Davis, and, uh, you know, he shared the same vision and, and, uh, and the rest of his staff. And, and what I I'd really appreciated was how connected they were. And, uh, and the same over, overarching theme was to, uh, it's time to play winning baseball here. And, uh, you know, they had enough of the losing. So... Um, again, that's why I'm very excited to be here. I'm also excited to be here to work with this team. Now, I know they didn't have the season they had hoped, but I tell you, man, when, when I look at this team and I look at the core players and the, the deep system and the, the vision that uh, CY has, uh, I, I got excited. I just see uh, tons of uh, potential for next year and years beyond. And uh, so I can't wait to be a, a part of it. And uh, um, I'm excited to uh, work with all the players, all the players that are here today. I can't thank you enough for being here. It means a lot to me that uh, you showed up. And uh, so thanks for that. I look forward to working with you and uh, getting to know you and, uh, and making some memories. Um, you know, I, I go back uh, quite a few years, but this, uh, you know, this is where I started my career in this state. So I'm going to say it's good to be back in Texas. I love Texas, and uh, uh, so it's exciting uh, to be back here. I'm looking forward to, you know, just getting to know this community and, uh, and uh, the fans. I know uh, I've seen, uh, I don't want to go back then, but I've uh, seen how excited and how much uh, they care about their Ranger baseball, so I'm excited about that. I have family here, too, so that's a, that's, you know, that's a plus, too, so I get to spend more time with them. Uh, I do want to talk about this uh, this building we're in. I mean, you're talking about incredible. It's the first time I've been here. I'd been to the old ballpark, but uh, they, they gave me a tour and uh, uh, just amazing what, what they've done here, uh, the clubhouse. And so I'm looking forward to uh, coming to work here every day. And, and you can't have a better place to create this winning culture that uh, I know CY wants to create and inspire these players uh, to want to come to work every day to get better. And so we're, we're very lucky to have this kind of venue. Uh, I do have to say, there was one box I, I did have to uh, check, check off, and that was my family. And uh, I have two, two adult sons, and uh, boy, they were all in. They're so excited about this. Now, I will say, my wife, Kim, it was you know, a little bit, I had to convince her a little bit more, but after conversations with, uh, with Chris and uh, Ray and the group, uh, you know, she's here, and so I can't thank her enough for getting on board and, uh, and being, uh, being excited about this. Now, there are some other people I would like to acknowledge here. I, I see a lot of the front office. Uh, you know, I really look forward to getting to know you, and I hope we, we develop that, uh, that culture to where you're comfortable coming up to me or, uh, and so we can uh, get to know each other. So that's, that's important to me. It really is. Uh, um, also... You know, in this game, you know, in our business, uh, your ability uh, to to recruit and develop great talent it's it's critical to your success. And I know that we have our scouts here; they're having their meetings. So I, I want to thank you guys for being here. I know you're here for a week, so I look forward to uh, you know getting to know you, talk to you, and find out a mo you know more about uh, our players. So uh, uh, that's going to be exciting for me. And probably the last thing I, I, I'd just like to say, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to help bring a championship here to Texas. And I know we have some work to do, but I can tell you I'm all in, all in on this. So to the front office, to uh, the players, to uh, all the fans, man, 
Let's do this together, okay? Thank you. Emily Jones, the Rangers dugout reporter. I know um, who you are. <laughs> Amy G said to tell you hi. Hi. Um, there had to be a lot of questions that you had. I'm sure the interview process was a two-way street. What questions did you have about this organization um, that you felt like you got the answers to ultimately say yes to this? Well, I think more than anything, Emily, I just wanted to know their vision. Uh, you know, again, you know, I. I I know the year didn't go like they, you know, they had hope, but I do know the investment that they made last year and to get these core players and, uh, and you know, that, that was important to me is uh, where they thought they were, what they thought they needed and, uh, and how passionate. I think we have a hurricane coming in right now, but, uh, uh, but anyway, that, that was important to me just to see the direction and what they thought. And like I said, you just feel it when you talk to CY. I know he grew up here. This community means so much to him that he wants to get this turned around in the worst way. Hey, uh, Jeff Wilson, Rangers Today. I have uh, no, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Jeff Wilson, Rangers Today. You said there's a lot of work to do, so what's first on the list? What do you think is the most pressing thing that has to get straight. Uh, I, I'm embarrassed to say, can, can y'all hear? Yeah, I can't hear. Yeah, did I didn't you hear? hear the question. Oh, yes, if we, you know, if we have a lot of work to do. Well, you know, these are things we're talking about now, uh, and uh, we will continue talking. It's going to happen right after, uh, you know, this press conference. Uh, you know, we're going to get to work on it, but you know, we, we, I think it's fair to say, you know, we're looking to, to build the pitching, uh, strengthen that. Uh, you know, we've talked about adding a bat, things like that. But, again, we got a great core here. And, uh, but, you know, you, you, there's some pieces uh, to add, and these are things we're talking about. Bruce, Newey Scruggs, can you hear me? Yeah, I okay. got you. Uh, with, with NBC5. Can you go back to 2010 when you won your first World Series and what you thought the experience was with Ranger fans and coming here in Arlington? God, I missed the last part. Can you go back to 2010 and World Series and what your impression of Ranger fans? Oh, yeah, and, and, and that's what I was talking about earlier. You know, I, I, uh, I had seen from the other side, uh, I've seen these fans in the frenzy and uh, how excited they were about their team. and. Uh, and what great fans they were, you know. Uh, you know, I, I know it didn't turn out like you had hoped here in 2010, but you know, I got to experience it, and uh, and they were wonderful. You know, they they were into the team, but very respectful. They loved baseball, and uh, you know, obviously it was a great moment for us. But uh, and and for them, you know, I think anytime you get the World Series, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. And uh, so it's good to you know to, to know and have a little feel about how much they love baseball here. Bruce, uh, Mike Ducey with Fox 4, welcome. Uh, Thank you. Wanted to ask you about the difference in day-to-day -day responsibilities of a manager now compared to when you started managing in the big leagues. What kind of adjustments you've had to make and possibly the kind of adjustments you'll continue to have to make in this job. Yeah. Well, I think it's fair to say this game's evolved and, uh, you know, it's, you get added uh, departments and, you know, you get your analyst, PD, things like that. And uh, so I, I think, uh, you know, a manager today has to be able to communicate and connect with, uh, every, you know, more people, you know. Yeah. And that's, that's what I hope to do and, uh, and have that continuity uh, and, and make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, um, it's just, 
you know, it's just going to be so critical for myself, the staff, uh, you know, to, to be connected with everybody. And I, I, I have to have the ability, you know, to, to do that, to uh, connect with uh, front office uh, analysts. Uh, you know, I'm very open-minded. It's one thing that uh, I want everybody to know. Sometimes they, they look at a manager that's a little bit older and, hey, he's old school, whatever. But uh, I, I want the input. I, you know, I... I, I, would, I want all the, the information I can get, but uh, but probably more important is uh, is how you transfer it to make sure it's done in a productive way, and that's part of my job and the staff's job to make sure that uh, we do that. Uh, Kennedy, can you hear me? Kennedy Landry, MLB.com. My question is actually for Chris. Um, last year, when we signed, you signed all those free agents. You talked about how you're pretty honest about the, you know, hill they had to climb after the hundred loss season. How did you approach kind of that with Bruce going into this compared to maybe getting free agents? Yeah, Kennedy, the exact same way, uh, with full transparency and honesty of where we are as an organization, uh, what we're looking to accomplish. Uh, we recognize there's a ton of work to do, uh, but we believe in the vision we have. We believe in the people that we're choosing to be a part of this. Uh, it started uh, last year with obviously the free agents we brought in and Corey and Marcus specifically, um, and we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to build internally. We're going to look for the right external fits, uh, but I think most importantly, having the right leader in the dugout to help us get that and the environment to get the best out of everyone is critical and uh, we're very excited uh, to have Boach in the dugout helping us do that. Uh, Brad Townsend, Dallas Morning News. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, this question is actually from Mr. Davis. Uh, both Bruce and Chris described your role in the hiring as integral why was it important to you to take an integral role, and what was it about uh, Bruce that you know made him the guy to hire? Why don't you go first, Chris? Brad, I think you, you want Ray to answer. Well, the, the process started with Chris. Uh, he called me and said he wanted to uh, interview Boach, and I had a hard time getting over 2010. Uh, but then after I got over 2010, I thought that was a pretty good idea. Uh, CY went to Nashville and I think met for like seven hours uh, with Kim and, and Boach. And I can honestly say, and I haven't talked to either one of these two guys about this, but I don't know if there was a fire in, in, in uh, Bochy to, to go back to managing or not. But if there was, I think Chris fanned it. Uh, he spent a lot of time going through our 27-man roster, our 40-man, our prospects, our vision, where the franchise is going. And I think it, if it didn't light a fire in Bochy, it, it fanned it and got it burning. So the, by, by the time that we went back to Nashville, uh, I think most of the questions, my first question was to him was, why do you want to do this? You got skins on the wall. And, and he went through the reasons why he was ready to take the challenge on again. And it didn't take long. In between CY's visit and my visit, he knew as much or more about our team and our prospects that I did. He'd done his homework. He's obviously very bright and very committed. And it took about 10 minutes into the process where I was sold. Uh, Ray, this is Kevin Sherrington, Dallas Morning News. The teams that are in the playoffs this year and now going to the World Series all had uh, payrolls approaching 200 million. You have said you want to win now, and that's one of the reasons why you all have made the moves you have. Are you uh, prepared to approach that kind of uh, barrier? It's interesting to note that the two highest payroll teams in baseball didn't play this weekend. So it's just not about the money. It's partially that, but I've made a commitment to see why that we're going to spend the money that it takes to put a competitive team on the field. And it's not just for one year. We're looking to put a competitive team on the year for multi-years. So to answer your question, I don't know where the payroll is going to end up, but we'll be competitive. 
Uh, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. Chris, this question's for you. Obviously, you know Bruce, and you've spoken fondly of him before. When it came to actually conducting a managerial search, though, in this role, how did you kind of maybe have to push out the past a little bit or even consider it, you know, going through the whole process? Yeah, it's, it's one of the things I told Boach when uh, we offered him the job. I said, I'm not doing this because I loved you when I played for you. I'm doing this because we believe as an organization you're the right person to lead us into the future. I recognize when I played for Boach in 2006, that was a long time ago. Um, I have special memories from that time. Uh, I've seen what he's gone on to do since then, uh, but evaluating what our needs are right now and where we're headed as an organization, um, that's what this decision was about. And Boach fit every part of our criteria in terms of that. And I, I'm very, very grateful uh, that he chose us. Hey, Bruce. Um the, uh, the 2010 Giants had a lot of homegrown talent, a lot of homegrown starting pitching. Do you see a lot of potential similarities between that ball club and the Rangers here in the next year or two? I do, and, and, and that's why I touched on, you know, not just the core players, but how deep their system is. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's how you not only, you know, win, but sustain winning is, uh, is those kids come up through your system, and uh, I think they've done a great job in their draft and, de and developing uh, uh, these young kids. And you're starting to see it now. You saw it last year with Jung, and and uh, you know the, the, you got some that are really uh, you know knocking on the door now. And I look forward to seeing them in spring training. And and I'm going to try as much as I can to get these young kids out there uh, during these uh, spring training games, so I can get to know them even more. But even on the lower level. Uh, but uh, this, this system, uh, it's, it's known for how strong it is. So uh, I, I think, you know, that's what excited me as much as anything is, uh, you know, what, what can happen even beyond next year. Chris, uh, Mac Engel with the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. A lot's been made how the role of the manager has evolved over the last 10 or 15 years. In your mind, is it really that much different today than it was when you were with San Diego or even San Francisco? Yeah, you know, if, yes and no, and I say that because you still manage your people. That that never stops. You know, it's, it's the same as you know when I started in 1995, and uh, and that's what I'll be doing now. So I think that's the most important part of managing. Uh, but like I said, you, you know, it's probably a little bit more collaboration, and uh, and you have to communicate uh, probably a little bit more. You know, with you know with your uh, departments, but uh, you know, it, it comes down to. Uh, you know, doing things in the right way in baseball, I think, you know, and it, for me, uh, you know, I try to keep it simple. I think of three things. Uh, uh, I'll start with fundamentals. I mean, we can talk about, you know, what's happened in baseball, and it's been good with all the uh, uh, information stats that we get, but uh, you still got to do things on the field that uh, you did 100 years ago, and that's catch the ball, run the bases, uh, make sure you're thrown to the right base, things like that. And, uh and, uh, you know, the, the second thing, uh, and I know Chris is big on this, is uh, you have to develop a, a chemistry culture for, for the club. And uh, you want to inspire these, these players to unleash their talent and play as one. And that, that's never going to stop, you know, whether back then or now. And uh, uh, I, I don't want to treat these players uh, as numbers. They're not robots. You know, I, I want to know them. I, 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 I want to know what, what makes them tick, read them, and uh, so it helps me maybe put them in a better role to where, where they can succeed. And, of course, the last one is preparation. That's never going to stop. You know, you, you want these guys prepared and, uh, and not be surprised. And, and that's the same for me. You know, before every game, I try to think through every scenario. So, you know, that's why I say yes and no. See why this one's a bit of a two-part Two-part question. First of all, how beneficial and what kind of a resource will Boach be for you in this role that you now uh, take on? And then two, the, the staff, how will that be constructed? Yeah, um, Emily, it's a great question. I think. I think a big part of this decision was me evaluating where I am and what my needs are, uh, specific um, it, also in addition to what the organizational needs are and understanding that uh, you know while there were very good candidates out there who have never managed before uh, for me in this moment having an experienced manager in the dugout not only suited me but I think is what is best for our organization our players so it was a big part of the decision 
Um, in terms of the staff, we obviously have a couple open spots right now. Uh, we're going to start working on that um, this week with Boach, uh, figuring out, starting with a pitching coach. Um, we've, got some, we, we've got some good candidates on a list. We're going to start working through that and hopefully in the coming weeks um, start shoring up our coaching staff. Uh, Ray, what message do you want your fans to take away from this hiring here and the moves that you've made this season? Yeah, I think all positive. I think uh, it was a big step in hiring Bochi. It, uh, but I look at it like it's a it's a big rock and a foundation, and I think we're building something very special. And he's part of that big rock. Cy's part of that big rock. And as we build that wall, I think it'll be sustainable for a long time to come. Yes, I'm Ozzie Garza with the Fort Worth Weekly. My question, Bo, which is, uh, what's significant about number 15 that you're going to be wearing? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I wish I had a good answer for you, but uh, I was 13, and uh, if you looked at my stats, I was trying anything to to change that and become a, a better hitter. So I, I thought 13 was bad luck and 15 became available and that's what I got. You know, when, when you're a role player, it's not like you, you get the first choice anyway. So that, that was the one they gave me. Uh, Chris, uh, you said there's a short list of candidates. How short was the list? Uh, yeah, Jeff, I don't want to get in the weeds too much, but there were, there were several, um, and we were willing to expand beyond that. Once, uh, but once we identified Boach and he was interested, we narrowed it very quickly and uh, knew that he was the right person for this job. Okay, and then to clarify on the coaching staff, are the, the guys who have been invited back are all coming back? Uh, yes. Alex Blink, Dallas Sports Fanatic. Uh, Chris, um, if, regarding pitching coaches, the last few years you guys have done with co-pitching coaches, is that still a possibility, or are you guys just looking for one guy? Uh, we haven't worked through that yet, Alex, but I think we'll probably lean towards a head pitching coach, uh, potentially consider an assistant pitching coach, but likely go with uh, one pitching coach in charge. Bruce, Stephen Hawkins with the Associated Press. One of the things that was talked about, how much you missed the game, and, and then Ray talked about how if you hadn't had the fire going, that Chris obviously fanned those. At what point when Chris called you, how quick did you want this opportunity, and how refreshed are you after a few years away, both mentally and physically? Yeah. Um, you missed the game, uh, you know, as the years go. The first, and I had a wonderful time with my family uh, for three years. I, I would like to say that. And uh, um, but you know, you, the more time went and watching the games, uh, the more uh, I was missing it. Now I, I wasn't going out pursuing uh, anything. And then when CY called me, uh, just be honest, man, my interest perked up. And uh, then we started talking. And uh, you know, he's checking my appetite on doing this, and then listening you know, to what, you know, he wanted to do here, his vision, uh, uh, and then coming out to uh, Nashville, and we talked for hours, and uh, and I, I was done. I was sold after that, and, uh, and of course, uh, you know, Mr. Davis came out, and so uh, it, it was an easy one for me, and uh, I, I still had the fire. I feel great, uh, um, and I'm thankful, you know, that I was staying in the game a little bit, uh, you know, and I have to thank the San Francisco Giants for having a position for me uh, the last three years. I, um, I did try to help out the French team, and I'm glad they didn't do a little more betting because we didn't do very good there. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, uh, so I, I, I was, man, I was excited. I was pumped. So uh, uh, I'm really, again, just excited and looking forward to, uh, you know, going to work after we're done here. Bruce, you said it was an easy decision once you talked to CY, but you also said it had to be the right opportunity to come out of retirement. What really made this one the right opportunity for you? Well, again, it's just listening, uh, you know, to uh, CY, uh, Ray, uh, you know, his, you know, his front office staff, uh, you know, looking at the team, all the things I, I, I talked about, uh, the city here, uh, I, I love it here. And, 
I hadn't seen the ballpark, so that wasn't part of it. But if I were to come here, it, you know, that, that would have been a slam dunk. Uh, again, how nice it is. So, you know, I think all those things, uh, all the above things, uh, is uh, really what, what excited me. And, you know, and we've known each other for a while. Uh, he, Chris talked about it. And, uh, and so, I, again, it just had to be, I just felt like it had to be the right fit for, for this to happen. And, uh, and after a con uh, conversations, I knew it was. Yeah, uh, Chris, when you hire a, a, a World Series winning manager, one the first word that comes to my mind is credibility, the credibility it brings to the franchise. Uh, in your experience, how much, you know, first of all, what's been kind of the, the reaction from the baseball world uh, in the last couple of days? And then in, in your experience it, with today's players, how much would that credibility matter in terms of maybe even attracting players here? Well, Brad, I can't speak necessarily to the second part. Time will show, but I am confident that by having Boach in our dugout and leading our team, uh, this is a very attractive destination. Um, in terms of the first question, uh, one of the things I did was I really reached out to a lot of executives within the game that I respect that have been very successful um, and got their opinions on this. And um, almost unanimously, Boach's name um, came up in every conversation. And given the relationship, um, given uh, the familiarity, um, what we need at this moment and where we're headed, uh, it became very clear to me uh, that he was the perfect candidate for this job. And I, I was uh, grateful that they uh, let me overstay my welcome in Nashville and uh, Boach and Kim didn't kick me out after a seven hour visit. But nonetheless, um, I'm happy to know and hear that um, that, that excited him and got him um, ready to come back and consider this opportunity. But. Um, very grateful that it's worked out. Anything else? Okay, we made it to the Rays. Thank you. Thank you.